In this exercise, we move on to image fusion, and we start with an exercise on analyzing hybrid data. So for this, we will use the Fuse It tool, and we will work through the matching workflow. In the case of data from a recent hybrid scanner, the fusion workflow is reduced to fuse display of each modality, bringing the user efficiently to the VOI analysis step. The matching workflow in the Fusit tool is broken down into five major steps. These can be seen in the top right as a list of pages that we will work through. We start with loading of the input images, then we load a reference image, then there is matching of the input to the reference with inspection of the matching result, then we can perform image algebra and finally VOI analysis. When hybrid data will be most commonly analyzed, it's useful to set the hybrid workflow as the default. This is performed in the configuration for Fusit, which is found in the lower left next to the Fusit main menu. In the dialog that this opens, we have a tab for functions within Fusit. And in the middle of that dialog, we can set the default matching. At the moment, it shows rigid and we will change that to hybrid. Note that things like the default color tables used for certain types of data are also found here. The data that will be used as reference when the modality is properly identified in the image header and some information about the volumes used for species recognition. Confirm the configuration with OK and then we're ready to load our data. So when hybrid workflow is set as default, both the input and the reference image can be loaded together. And this is most effective when we use the database or similarly if we use DICOM data. So select the Bruker PCI database, mouse six. And for this mouse, we have several series available, but we will work with the pet whole body and the CT as anatomy. We add each of those to the selected for loading list. And when we click on open, Fusit will load the images, select the hybrid workflow, re-slice the pet to the resolution of the CT, and then it will skip to the comparison tab to display the blended fusion of the series in the whole body layout. So now you saw the tool work through the input loading and the reference loading and then we've jumped from the matching tab to the comparison tab where we see the whole body layout and we see the CT with some pet image displayed at the same time. In fact the pet image is dominated by high activity in the bladder so if we want to see it more clearly we should adjust the upper threshold. Now we do that with the usual image controls for the pet on the top right hand side. In fact we have two sets of image controls now. One for the input image labeled with a green marker and the tooltip shows us that this is the pet data and then we have a second set of image controls for the CT. So on the first set of image controls on the general image manipulations tab we can change the upper threshold to 800 and now we see the pet image more clearly in the whole body display. On this comparison tab we can choose the layout. In the lower right we have shortcuts for alternative layouts. For this type of whole body PET CT data the whole body layout is quite nice. If we have more than a simple pair of images available we can choose the input that is displayed using the menu labeled A and similarly we could have multiple references. Then we also have a capture icon for the usual display captures and an option to do some 3D rendering if necessary. So below our pair of image control tabs, we now have new controls and these are the fusion controls. 
the new slider allows us to adjust the alpha blending to display between the PET and the CT. As well as moving this manually, you can enter a threshold on the left hand side and there are color coded shortcuts that will jump between full input display, 50 50 display, and full reference display. Just above the fusion slider, we have a choice of modes that can be used, and the mix mode represents the default alpha blending mode. Below the slider, we have the option of turning on contouring, which we'll see more in later exercises. On the right hand toolbar, we have other green and blue labeled icons for manipulations of the input and reference images, which you would need if we didn't already have hybrid data. So again, we will see those in the next exercises. If we want to continue straight on with VOI analysis, we can use the shortcut on the right lateral taskbar, which will take us back to the matching page, but to the VOI analysis part. Here we still see fusion display within the image display on the left hand side. We see the full set of VOI tools and their listing in the center. And on the right hand side, we see our pair of image control tabs, our fusion controls, and then VOI additional controls and settings on the right hand side while still being able to choose the input and reference images when we have more available. For this exercise we will outline the same lesion on the right flank of this mouse that we outlined at the end of section one. If I triangulate that location we can zoom in by factor four so that we see this blended fusion of the PET and the CT. We can still turn on the MIP as we've seen in the previous exercises. And we can adjust the display of that as necessary. And note that only one MIP is displayed depending on the image controls that are selected. But this will allow us to navigate through either of the images thanks to the hybrid fusion. If we switch to the reference display, we should also configure the MIP, in this case, seeing skeleton and some of the imaging hardware more clearly. And as we switch displays, the MIP switches with us. And now to outline the lesion, we've centered the coordinates of the cursor. I can define a sphere as initial boundary condition. I will take a seven millimeter radius and create the sphere. Then I can open the ISO contour dialog. Calculations take a little longer than in the previous exercise because we have an increased resolution while we're working at the CT resolution. I can set the defaults and PMOD quickly recalculates the contour. Then I can confirm the calculation of that VOI and I can use the fusion slider to see how that corresponds to either the PET data or to the CT data before going on to calculate statistics. I should be careful when I calculate statistics because the statistics calculated also depend on the image control tab to select either the input data or the reference data. Typically, we will select the input data and then calculate the statistics.